and the Oscar goes to Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Let's go. I'm doing better. Whether we're talking about gender inequality or racism or queer rights or indigenous rights or animal rights, we're talking about the fight against injustice. Doing better than ever. I'm doing better than ever. I'm doing better than ever. You know, I'm doing better than ever. 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 Like the sun shining after bad weather. I'm doing better than ever. I'm doing better than. One with flying colours? What else to expect? You are vegan. We now invite you to watch the next part of Supreme Master Ching Hai's message entitled The Story of Mahakasyapa, Vegan, Part 6 of 10, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on July 14, 2024. I want to thank you with Mahakashipa for being so kind to me. We were friends in uh, earlier lives and we were good with each other, compatible. Thank you for the relics of the Buddha. Thank you for the bowl, like the arms, bowl, the, the begging bowl for the monk. But in our time, Mahakashipa should understand, the Buddha also understands that it's very difficult to go out begging, especially for a woman. And I'm not that young anymore. So I just say eat one meal a day in the house and I have to do so much work, homework, inside, outside. So if I keep going out and baking and coming back, I don't think it'd be convenient for me. Even though I would love that free life so very, very, very much. Even just to eat one meal, cooking and washing, I feel already is a lot of work for me. And you have to clean your house, you have to clean the floor, wash the blankets and the clothes, and then wash the dishes after cooking and wash the kitchen and utensils and all that. I feel it's too much, too much work. Already, I wish God would allow me to be breatharian again. It's more convenient, but still, I cannot. I'm not allowed to. Uh, I still feel very sorry that I can't be breatharian because it was so good when I was breatharian. I felt like I was walking on the cloud and everything felt light. Everything felt like no worry. <laughs> Even nobody involved, nothing you should worry about, nothing you fear. Because you have nothing. And if you even don't eat, don't drink, <laughs> you really have nothing to fear at all. You have nothing to lose. It was absolutely a very, very, very beautiful feeling. And now even eating once a day, oftentimes I often don't taste anything. Sometimes I feel a little appetite or even hunger, but rarely does the food taste any good. Maybe because when you cook for yourself, it doesn't taste very good. If somebody else cooks for you, then maybe it tastes good. I remember I loved food. I loved food so much before. <laughs> and I always had a kind of small party <laughs> in my little kitchen. I had a, a couple of... Uh, chefs and cooks to cook f for me. So I asked them to cook a lot and I invited the uh, workers in the ashram, some monks or some nuns, not all of them. Those who came helped me to uh, repair the house or repair the car or some helped me to clean the golf car or clean my yard, something like that. So monks or nuns, I invited them. They took turns. So. It was very good, and when I ate with someone else, it tasted so good, so good, so appetizing. And then I kept eating a lot. 
But then later I preferred to eat once a day and less and less because even if you like to, you shouldn't eat so much. I mean me, huh? Not you, okay? Please. And do what you want with your life. It's your life. As long as you don't harm anyone, and as long as you're vegan, I'm happy already. But if you want to try to have less and less pain, invisible pain even from plants, trees or flowers in your house, then you can try a little bit at a time. You can get used to it. See, if your body accepts you have it, don't cut everything off all at once like the way I did when I became breatharian. Maybe you will cause yourself trouble. I didn't cause myself trouble. I was younger then and healthy. I worked a lot in that temple, cleaning every day, washing, cooking for everybody, yeah, and helping to write uh, articles for the Arbut and transcribing his talk onto paper. Yes, he had a magazine or something. Before that, I had met a Waterian nun before, I told you, in Meoli, not where we live, but nearby in the same region called Meoli. So my heart ever since has been longing to be at least a Waterian or Breatharian, but I could not somehow. Because I have to tell you the truth, I loved food. I remember a long time ago, the Buddha told me that he became Buddha before I would, because I love food too much and ate a lot. I still do, though, even though not as much as before. Usually, before I lived with people or in the temple, a lot of people come and eat together, so that makes you have even more appetite. And when I was in Siu, Taiwan also, I invited people to come eat with me. So the more people with you, the more appetite you have and the more you eat. <laughs> Sometimes I couldn't go back into the old, beautiful clothes that they made for me before. Because mostly when I go out in public, I have to wear the clothes that I designed or they designed at different companies in order to sell, <laughs> like I'm... Uh, model, but I don't have any <laughs> payment for it, okay? Don't be envious. I didn't know being a master, you even have to sing and dance. <laughs> I had to do many things, and I still have to. Somehow, most of the people who know about my designs or my jewelry, for example, they love it. So I had to show it anyway. You might wonder why I don't advocate for uh, one meal a day or asceticism when I myself do it. I do it for a different reason. I told heaven that if I eat once a day, while well, normally I could eat three times a day, that whatever meal I don't eat could be given to other souls. And even if you don't meet those hungry people or maybe hungry ghosts, if you have spare, in your mind, then the food will go to them in the different delivery. They don't necessarily see that I share my meal with them, but because of the vow, they will get it. But I'm just trying to bring home to you, don't punish your body. One meal a day won't make you liberated and won't make you enlightened because it has to be transmitted by an enlightened master, just like a candle. Pass on the light to the next candle, and both will be brightened like that. But without that lighted candle, the other candle will not be bright. There has to be another fire instrument somewhere, like a candle, fire, a lighter, or even burning gas on the stove. Now, Mahakashipa. He was already an ascetic, so spiritual, you know, he learned some with other masters before the Buddha. So how come he still had to find the Buddha in order to realize his holy position as an arhant in the short time? Why did he have to do that? Huh? Why? Because he knows uh, you have to have a guide, you have to have an expert, you have to have this master who transmits the way to you 
with the master energy attached to it, in the beginning at least, to help you to go back into the inside realm where you belong. Yeah, and then slowly you walk home from the inside realm. If you don't have a, a master, a living master, a, a living teacher, then uh, no matter what you do, you can say that 99% is not fruitful. Even if you can achieve some meditative power like a seer or some yogic power or something, it's not complete liberation, it's not Buddhahood. You will be reborn again on earth, and then God knows if you can still continue to control your life in virtue, morals, and beauty or not. Without a real transmission of inner power to you, to open your own power, it's a very uh, slim chance that you could enlighten yourself and reach liberation, or if learning some other method that is not uh, suitable, that is not the ultimate. And after Mahakashipa sent for his wife, huh? she came to study with the Buddha, and in a short while she became an arhant also, I mean saint already. You know, during the Buddha's time, sometimes the Buddha just talked to somebody, or they came and talked to him, and the Buddha explained to him, huh. expounded to him the truth, and then that person became enlightened and attained some level after meeting and talking to the Buddha. It's not because of the Buddha's talk or a voice. It's because of the power emanating from it. And or also that the Buddha will teach that person a method to practice maybe light and sound method, the way you are practicing. So it is not like you can just uh, repeat uh, or learn from somebody else, second or third hand, from the Buddha. That means produce from the Buddha's teaching, and then you can be enlightened. You see, it has to be a living teacher. And many other monks also, like Ananda and other persons, they had to be under the Buddha's merciful guidance with tremendous power from within the Buddha himself. Supreme Master Ching Hai, vegan, is a world-renowned spiritual teacher, humanitarian, and artist. To learn more about her compassionate life and teachings, please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash master. Master.